Thank you. Thank you to the conference organizers, and especially thank you to Miltani for inviting me up here to talk about our group's work in sample preparation. And we're all here because biology is incredibly complex. We need to detect millions, billions, and now with the Human Cell Atlas project, trillions of individual biological data points. So at 10x, we've built a platform to address the complexity of biology by enabling millions of reactions in individual experiments. And we achieve this using a microfluidic approach. So far, we have three commercialized product lines. Today, I'll focus on single cell gene expression. And our product lines are part of what we call the chromium system. So we offer consumables, reagents, an instrument which is about this big, and software pipelines for data processing and data analysis. And um, if you're not familiar with our technology, it's important to mention that we don't make the sequencer. We make everything except. So we, we prepare Illumina-compatible libraries. And I will skip over the workflow because the previous speakers did such a fantastic job um, and mention that to do single cell gene expression, you need to start with a single cell suspension. And it can't be any old single cell suspension. Sample quality is incredibly critical. So we're looking for a clean suspension with high viability and cells that are handled gently. There are many different challenges here. For instance, it's difficult to completely dissociate tissue. You can generate a lot of subcellular debris. If you have dead or dying cells, they have reduced RNA content per cell and won't contribute to a, a, a high functional or high quality library. Um, and if you don't pipette your cells properly or if you use suboptimal buffers, you may also get poor results. Um, but that's okay because there are solutions to all of these challenges and it really requires good methods um, good products, and really it requires some practice. Um, and so I'm happy to be talking about methods today because they're usually buried at the back of a manuscript or in the online supplementary methods. Um, so throughout this whole session, it's just been a joy to hear talking, people talking about sample preparation. Um, and in the course of my group's work, um, what we do is generate protocols and advice for single cell sample preparation. We started buying a lot of products from Milteni, and at some point we realized, well, we should just partner together um, because our companies have a very similar philosophy, which is delivering really high quality products for sample preparation and cellular analysis. So today I'm going to talk about solid tumor dissociation, both a workflow and a case study. Um, so our tumor dissociation workflow, we use the Milteni Octo Dissociator with heater and the tumor dissociation kit. And if you haven't dissociated before, if you haven't used these products before, you just mince up a tumor, add it to the tube, squirt in some enzymes, and you get a nice homogenate. We then filter the homogenate in a 70 micron max strainer, remove some of the large aggregates, and you're always going to have some large aggregates present when, with, with dissociated tissue. But importantly, this also removes the small clumps and clusters because you really need a single cell suspension. And we also tested two subsequent cleanup steps, removing red blood cells and also depleting dead cells. Again, this is a Milteni kit. Um, and at the end, you can generate a very high quality single cell suspension. And for the case study, we're working with syngenaic mouse tumors. Um, this is a tumor taken from a primary, a primary tumor from a mouse, cultured and evolved in vitro. And then what you can do is inject, inject it back into mice and generate tumors with similar phenotypes. And we're working with three well-known models, breast, colon, and melanoma. And from each of these models, we had three independent mice for a total of nine tumors. And from each of these tumors, we prepared sequencing libraries at every step of the sample preparation workflow. So just after filtration and then adding in the subsequent processing steps. So in total, this was nine tumors evaluated. We made 47 sequencing libraries and sequenced more than 84,000 individual cells. And the goals of this case study were really threefold, to look at performance, to look at reproducibility, and to look at the characterization of heterogeneous cell populations. And we wanted to execute on this workflow multiple times. So let's start with performance. Um, when we run our Cell Ranger software pipeline, metrics are reported back that can help you um, determine the quality of your starting sample. And one of those metrics um, is around library cleanliness. So you're looking for the fraction of reads 
that can be confidently mapped back to a single cell versus in a background or free-floating mRNA. Um, we call that metric fraction of reads and cells. And on the x-axis here are the subsequent cleanup steps that we applied to these tumor samples. Um, for this analysis, all the different tumor types and replicates were combined together. And you can see that with subsequent cleanups, this is just after filtration, this is adding in red blood cell lysis, and this is adding in dead cell removal. You're going from a median value of 79% of your reads and cells up to above 90%. And we generally look for 80% or higher. So it's, um, we were pleasantly surprised to see that the starting post-filtration um, cell suspension had a pretty high value. Next, we look at library complexity. And we do this by calculating the number of genes expressed per cell. And to make this calculation, you have to normalize to the same number of reads per cell. So we chose low sequencing depth of around 20,000 reads per cell. And again, you can see an increase in this value with subsequent cleanup steps. The last factor we look at is the number of cells recovered. And this is not the number of cells recovered in the starting tumor. That's in the multiple millions. This is the number of cells recovered per sequencing library. Um, when you prepare a sequencing library with 10x, you can target between 100 and around 10,000 cells. It's, it's sort of up to the user. And here for the colon tumors, these are the three individual tumors, again, with the same progression of cleanup steps. In this case, we're targeting 5,000 cells. And you can see the more you clean the sample, the closer you get to hitting your target. And that's really for a couple of reasons, uh, probably multiple reasons. But at least two of those reasons are dead or dying cells don't have a lot of RNA and won't lead to a, a high quality library. And the second is that, um, especially when people are less familiar with counting cells, if you have a lot of debris, you might incorrectly designate a piece of debris as a cell, and you'll get an artificially high cell concentration, um, and then you'll get a, a low cell recovery back. And this held true as well for the melanoma samples, as well as the breast samples. And you can see there's definitely some heterogeneity in the response here. But overall, the trend is pretty clear that with additional cleanup steps, you get much closer to your target recovery, target recovered number of cells. And to look at reproducibility, um, we turn to our software called Loop Cell Browser. And shown here is a T-SNE plot um, where each dot is a single cell, and they're cl clustered based, of the, based on the similarity of the genes expressed. And the color here refers to which sequencing library the cell came from. So I'm combining all of the different independent tumors from different mice, um, same tumor type. On the left, these are the breast tumors at the first stage of cleanup. On the right are the breast tumors at the final stage of cleanup. And what you can see immediately is that the colors are distributed evenly, suggesting that the libraries are very reproducible. And when you break out these plots into the individual member libraries, again, you can see very similar clustering patterns, even for these tiny minor clusters. This held true for the colon tumors as well. You can, again, see great similarity across replicates. These are biological and technical replicates. And in the case of melanoma, here's where we found one example where the cleanups actually significantly improved reproducibility. We had one tumor here that didn't cluster with its neighbor samples. Um, however, after the additional cleanup steps, red blood cell lysis and dead cell removal, um, the samples looked quite, quite homogenous. And finally, um, since these are complex biological samples, we'd like to look at our ability to call and determine different cell types. And I'll start here. These are just the breast tumor samples. Again, the, the multiple mice were combined in multiple libraries. There are a total of eight libraries in this plot and 6,300 cells. We generated multiple libraries, again, because we're looking at reproducibility and performance. But as a customer, you can do this in just a single library. Um, what you can see here, uh, the algorithm is actually coloring these clusters based on um, similarity of cell types. So what we often see is that cell types are geographically separated. Um, and it's a naive clustering. It's graph-based clustering. So you can go in with your hypotheses and pull out, using known marker genes, the identity of the different cell clusters. And Zora, Zora showed this quite nicely in her talk. If you look for expression of the CD45 protein, you can clearly see the clusters of immune cells. And by digging in a little bit deeper, you can assign the identity of each of those clusters. We have an additional cluster of cells. 
and the expressed genes are consistent with adipose mesenchymal precursor cells, which biologically would make sense since we're looking at a breast tumor. And we have a tiny cluster down here with marker genes consistent with mammary basal cells, which again might make sense biologically with the sample type. But here, the vast majority of the cells are the epithelial tumor cells. Um, we see quite a large single, singular cluster, and this is probably because this is a syngeneic mouse tumor. Um, there is very little genomic heterogeneity in this tumor. It's very clonal. Um, it's small and has not yet vascularized. And when we look for markers known to be expressed in the starter cell line, which the, the tumor grew from, um, we clearly see identification. But within these large clusters, you can also look for substructure. So if you pull out markers for cell proliferation, you can see the proliferating cells at the edge of this cluster. And what's neat is that you can also see signals of cell proliferation in the other cell types, such as the adipose mesenchymal precursor cells or some of the immune cell clusters. And you can identify these different cell types in all of the different tumors tested. Um, what I did was analyze the three tumor types before and after the additional cleanup steps. And you can see that in each of these graphs, you can clearly identify distinct clusters. There is that exception of the melanoma samples pre-cleanup, where we got very few cells back. Um, however, you can still see distinct clusters. Um, so this was a pleasant surprise for all of us, especially to see that um, at the earlier stages of cleanup, we still got such great clustering. So to sum up this case study, we were really happy with the performance of the samples at the earlier stage of cleanup. This is not always the case. There are many samples where you absolutely need to remove dead cells, have very high ambient RNA. Um, these samples happen to be pretty clean right off the bat. But with the additional cleanup steps, you do see a, an improvement in all of these metrics, significantly in the number of cells that you get back. Um, and I will add that you might need to optimize depending on what you're looking at. What we're really focusing on were detection of the tumor cells, but if you're looking for more fragile cells, if you're looking for specific immune cells, um, you might need to optimize your handling technique or protocol or buffers to maximize recovery of those cell types. And you can run any 10x assay if you have a high quality cell suspension. And we demonstrated on the colon tumor cell suspension, uh, we took the cells, we isolated high molecular weight DNA, just popped the cells open and ran our linked genome sequencing assay. And if anyone's familiar with, with prepping high molecular weight DNA from solid tumors, what we got back was a result of a mean DNA size of 145 KB, which is incredibly impressive. Um, we, all, we showed you plenty of single cell gene expression data. Um, Zora mentioned, and I'll also mention, that we are developing a high definition immunology product. We currently support immune receptor profiling for humans, and we're in development for mouse. Um, so stay tuned for some more data off of this sample. And then just this week at a conference, we announced a brand new product for single cell copy number profiling. Um, and this is again aimed at characterizing the heterogeneity of tumors. So this is a very early version of our chemistry. And this is just four of the hundreds of cells that we profiled, but you can clearly see the two um, normal immune cells and then the aberrant tumor cells. So to summarize, sample quality is absolutely critical for success. And if you have good methods and good products, you'll get reproducible results. Um, you will also have to practice. I'm not, I'm not going to uh, try and simplify this. Uh, you need to have good laboratory technique. Multani offers a really comprehensive range of high quality products from, for sample prep, from dissociation to straining, uh, depletion, and I haven't even mentioned they have enrichment kits if you're interested in specific cell types so you don't need to do flow cytometry. Um, and if you're interested in this tumor dissociation workflow, you can download it from our website um, or talk to any of us. Uh, we have some colleagues from Milteni in the audience today, um, and I'll be around for the entire symposium. So I'd like to thank all of you for your time and attention, especially Sharmila Chatterjee and Elena Puleo at 10X, and Cole Jones and Murray Francis from, at Milteni Biotech for their help with this study. Thank you very much.